Most fractals are associated with what many would consider as very complicated math, and well, yeah, that's true for most fractals. The ones that we'll cover today can be made in Blender very easily with just a couple of nodes. This video is inspired by Isrola's uh, particle system video. If you would like mo a more in-depth explanation of these fractals and how to render them in a real-time context on the GPU, which isn't what we'll be doing today, you should go and watch that video, but I'll try to give a brief overview. The Sierpinski triangle is what's known as an iterated function system, which can be defined as a collection of functions that, when repeatedly applied to a starting point or set, generate a fractal shape. In this case, we'll start with a single point at the origin. We then duplicate this point three times, divide all of their positions by two, which does nothing right now because zero divided by two is still just zero, and then apply some transformations where one goes up, one goes down and right, and the other goes down and left. All we have to do now is repeat this step, and you can see the Sierpinski triangle start to emerge. So inside of Blender, we can actually create these transforms really easily. If I just make any object, doesn't matter what it is, and I'll go over here in my Geometry Nodes workspace, create a new Geometry Nodes tree, and I can just delete the group input, and we will make a points node. And we just want one point. And then if we take a repeat zone, which was introduced in 4.0, um, I'm also in the 4.5 beta, by the way, I can highly recommend that you use it um, if you're using up-to-date Blender. Vulkan is a new thing, so you just go to Edit Preferences System. You can turn on Vulkan. It's much faster in my experience, and it uses way less VRAM in the viewport, so I can highly recommend Vulkan. But back to the fractal, if we want to just start off by making the Stropinski triangle, what we can do is, like I said, the general starting point, or the general algorithm, for the Sierpinski triangle is to duplicate the point three times and then apply a set of transforms to them. So what we can do is we can just take this point and transform geometry and we can just do that three times. And then after we've done this, we can do a join geometry. Uh, and if you're wondering how I'm doing that, I'm just holding alt and right clicking on this and then you can just drag to any node and it'll automatically connect. So now, looks like nothing's happened, but that's just because we haven't transformed anything yet. If we go ahead and open our spreadsheet, you can see that we now have three points. And if I up this repeat zone, we go to nine and then to 27. So it, this is an exponential growth of the point count. So be careful with how much you turn this iterations up. Um, the max I've gone is 16, which gets you how many points? It's a couple million. Yeah, it gets you 43 million points. Um, and that's like about the max that my computer can handle. So I would recommend don't go too high on that count. But for the Sapinski triangle, the specific transforms that we have to do on all of the points, we divide by two. So that would just mean setting the scale to 0.5. And we do that for all of them. And then on this one, we're going to go up by 0.36. On this one, we're going to go down by 0.5 and to the right by 0.5. And then on this one, we're also gonna go down by 0.5 and to the left by 0.5. So now you can see we have a triangle. And if I just up this iteration count, you will start to see the Sierpinski triangle appear. And let's just add a set point radius so we can turn this down. If I crank the iterations up, we now have a Sierpinski triangle. Um, and it's, like I said, incredibly simple. I mean, what is this? eight nodes. So yeah, this is probably the easiest fractal you can make in Blender. Um, and the cool thing is we have these transforms. We don't have to just stay limited to the original Sierpinski triangle parameters. We can, you can see if I change the scale here, we can have like a branching. So you can just mess around with this stuff. And when it gets really cool is when you introduce some rotation, because now we can venture into the third dimension. Um, and you can also give it some, some Z translation. But yeah, you can really just mess around with these values. And I'm gonna turn my iteration count up. And if you if you go above one on these scales, then it it will kind of blow up. Like you can see here, the more I go, the more it just explodes. Um, so I'd recommend probably staying beneath one. Or I mean, on some of them you can go above one. Like in this render that you saw in the intro and thumbnail, this uh, this is basically just the default Sierpinski triangle um, with a little bit of rotation added and the scale cranked up above one. So you get this kind of streaking effect as these points go out into 
infinity. Um, so it can be used for other effects. Um, and as you can see here, I'm doing some stuff in the compositor to make this look more cohesive. Um, I'll show you how to do that in a minute once we get to the rendering step. But yeah, that's just to show that you can go above one on some of these and it'll look good. Turn the iterations up, turn the radius down. If I like, it's like there. And you can see if I set the scale to zero on any of these, we'll get these like uh, flat regions all around, um, which can also look pretty cool. So yeah, I think I'm gonna keep it like that. I actually like this quite a bit. And then we can just set up a camera. So I'll make a camera and then I will snap it to view, um, which is up here as well. Yeah, align active camera to view. Um, I have my keybind changed, but yeah, it's up there. Um, I think this is a cool angle. We kind of get this grazing angle on this thing. Yeah, I think I like that. I might change the focal length a little bit then come back out. Might do something like that. Uh, too high a focal length. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay, and now you can see I have my iterations on 12. I'm going to leave it like that for now. When I render, I'm going to up that. And if you want, you can do an is viewport node and a switch node set to integer. And then you can have, if it's false, that's going to be the render. So that would be 16. And then true, you can set that to 12. So now when I render, it will be set to 16, but in the viewport, it's just going to be 12. And we can create a new material. But you see, if I, if I change this, nothing happens. And that's because we have to make a set material node and we can set the material and now you can see it changes and in cycles we can actually render point clouds directly um, we don't need to do any instancing with icospheres or anything like that uh, we used to but not anymore they just get rendered as uh, perfect spheres with actually infinite resolution so yeah it's pretty cool and this can be really useful for optimization if you're making like i saw somebody make an asteroid field using parallax occlusion mapping which if you don't know what that is Look into it, it's pretty cool. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. Let's stay with this. I'm not gonna make it purple. I mean, maybe eventually. Um, I like using the position attribute uh, and shading these. I think it looks pretty cool. Honestly, we could just plug that into the base color, see what that looks like. Okay. It's like a hue, no, hue saturation value. Turn the saturation down change the hue a bit and then I'm gonna do a vector math where is it absolute yeah I think I like that and then I'm gonna add some subsurface I think yeah that kind of gives it this like gummy look uh, if I turn this down you can see kind of becomes more homogenous which I think I like and then I think I'll change do I want sheen hmm maybe you see it kind of gives these this outline I think I'll turn that down but I'll keep a little bit of it and then emission, I will, I'm going to want to add some emission, but I don't want to add emission everywhere. So I'm going to take the position again, and then I'm going to use a vector math uh, distance. And if you're in 4.5, by the way, you can just type distance straight up. Even if you're not doing a drag search, you can just do distance and it'll come up like that, which is very nice. So I'm glad we have that feature. But you'll see if I have just the position into this distance, we get a gradient coming out from zero, zero, and I can change this location to be more of the center of mass of this fractal. So I'm gonna put it like there, because I kind of want the core to glow. And then I'm going to take a map range node and do something like that. Maybe set this to smoother step, and then I'll set this to be higher, plug that into the strength, and then this into the color. Put a multiply node afterwards to up the emission strength. And yeah, I'm thinking I'm, I'm liking that. And I might add some transmission Ooh, yeah, I think I like that. Um, and right now, I'm just using a plain white background. I'm not gonna do that when I actually render. So I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, and then I might actually go with no emission. And then I'll just make a point light on the inside. And I'll put that like right here. Just the light power, adjust the radius. Yeah, I think I like that. Yeah. And then I might turn the transmission up even more and maybe specular up even more yeah i like that so i'll move this point light into the lights collection that i have um and i might change its color we'll see i think i maybe want to tint it a little bit bluish pink yeah like kind of a pastel purple yeah i think i like that okay so now 
I'm going to go back into my geometry notes tree and I'm going to turn the radius down even more. And you can see on a low iteration count, we kind of get this like wispy effect. Honestly, YouTube compression might kill this. You might not even be able to see it, but we kind of get this wispy effect. Um, I'll turn the iterations to 16 so we can actually see this, but my computer's not going to like me very much. Yeah, you can see it's rendering very slow now. But it's more filled out now. Um, and yeah, that's really cool. Okay, great. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, all right, so I'm going to go into solid mode and I'm going to plug this back in so my viewport doesn't die. And I can actually copy this and set this to float. And then I'll take this. This will be false. And then this with one less zero will be true. So now when it's in the viewport, we'll get a bigger radius than in the render. And yeah, I'm just going to render it out. Um, pretty simple settings. Uh, my sample is at 200. I'm going to be using uh, open image denoise. This doesn't require too heavy of a denoise or sample count or anything. Let's render this out. Oh, actually, I forgot something. What I want to do is I want to go to render and then in film, I want to turn on transparent because I want to be able to change the background color uh, in the compositor. And I, I mean, I could do that with this, but it's easier if it's just set to, to transparent. So now once it uh, does this, yeah, you can see the background's all transparent. Um, and that's what we want. So I'll see you when this render's done and we can get into compositing. Okay, so the render's done and you can see there's a lot of cool detail here. Like I said, I think I'm gonna render this out in 4K once I'm done with the compositing, but I wanna show you this. Uh, it'll be faster if I don't render in 4K yet. So I'm gonna keep this over here. This is how I like to work in compositing. If you want, you can do the backdrop thing with the viewer. I'm just not a big fan of this. I don't like my, my image to be obscured by my nodes. So I'm not gonna do that. What you can do instead is if you're like me and you don't like that, you can come over here and then switch this render result to viewer node. And now this will be seeing whatever your viewer does, which is very nice. So we can take this image here. And one of the things I like to do this fractal is add a Kuwahara filter. I think that it makes it really, I don't know, it gives it this really cool shape definition. We've got these jagged shapes. This uh, Kuwahara filter is what gives me these cool shapes in uh, these renders. I think it fits really well with these fractals. I especially like this one. This is a 4K render, but yeah, it gives you some really cool blocks of color. I think this one kind of looks like coral. I mean, I think they all kind of look like coral. Yeah, I, I think that this compositing pipeline is pretty good for what we're doing. And actually, before I do the Kuahara, I want to add an alpha over node um, with this in the second slot. And then I can just, using this, I can just change the background color to be whatever I want. Actually, yeah, I think I need, I, I want my uh, compositor to be set to GPU. If your compositor is slow, you can switch it to GPU, which is going to be a lot faster. Uh, I think you can get some errors uh, sometimes, but it works pretty well. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm going to make this kind of a, I like this background color for these fractals. Um, maybe a little brighter. Yeah. Uh, maybe kind of yeah i think i like that and then on the cool hard filter i think i'm gonna turn the eccentricity up um if you hover over it, it it shows you what it means it's basically just how much the filter will follow the direction of uh your edges and stuff and this video is inspired by ace Rolla, as you know but he also has a video on this uh cool hard filter which is pretty interesting so i'll also link that in the description if you'd like to watch it and you can turn the sharpness down which also gives you these kind of fuzzy edges which i like honestly maybe i, I might do that for this one um you can see the difference here if i zoom in sharpness at one sharpness at zero i think i'll keep it somewhere in between for this one maybe like 0.3 um and then i like adding a little bit of lens distortion or dispersion i should say i'll go like 0 0.008 if you turn this up a lot you'll see what it does it gives it some like chromatic aberration I like just adding a tiny bit so you get a little bit this chromatic aberration around the edges of the image. Um, you don't have to do it, but but don't go overboard with this. It is uh, pretty ugly if you do. Oh, cool. That's a horizontal is a new option in 4.5, I think. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Wow, that's really high. <laughs> and then the last thing I want to do is add a glare node set to, we'll do blue. Um, and I'll turn the threshold down. I think I want to change the uh, background color over here as well. Yeah, something like this, like a turquoise. So yeah, this is a pretty simple compositing setup for this, but I think it works really well in conjunction with these fractals. So yeah, let me render this out in 4K. All right, so this 4K render is done. It took a little bit longer. It only took three minutes though. So 
These can take a really long time to render depending on the shader you use. But with this, this setup, it's not too bad for me. And I mean, like I said, we're rendering, what is this, 40 million points in this image? So yeah, it is a lot, but you can see if I turn the Kuara filter off, we do get kind of some more detail back here. And you can leave it like this if you want, obviously, it's up to you. Uh, I just like, love the way the Kuara filter looks with these. I think I'll maybe turn the sharpness down even more, get kind of more of that painterly look. I think that's it for this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this fractal. Like I said, probably the easiest fractal you can make in Blender. I mean, it's literally just these nodes and that's it. The This Blender file with this fractal uh, will be up on my Gumroad for free if you'd like to download it. But I mean, you can just input these settings into your transform geometries and do that. Well, another thing you can do is I'm gonna turn the iterations down for this, is you can add a fourth point. Why not, right? And this will give you even more crazy fractals, right? So yeah, you can really go crazy with this and just kind of do whatever you want. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, feel free to drop a like and subscribe, but have a good day. See you in the next one.